enjoy decorating your home for the holidays like I do? Hi, I'm Susan Lohman, the Crochet Architect. I've got a special project for you today to decorate your home for Easter. It's my Easter egg pot holder. So, let's get started. I want to say a quick thank you to those of you who have purchased a pattern from my website. Your patronage is very much appreciated. So, let's get started with the demo. As you can see, I've got two Easter egg pot holders here. This is the basic one, and there's no color changes done in this one. This one changes colors because I had some scraps of different colors that I wanted to use up. And I decided to do a little embroidery on here to make it a little bit more interesting instead of just a white patch. Now, both of these pot holders are two-sided. There's two pieces, the front and the back. And they're both crocheted the same way. And we join the two pieces together with a single crochet edging around the whole thing. And we do our hanging loop at the top. So let's take a look at the pattern really quickly. Here's the pattern, which is available on my website. And we have all the information about the pattern. We have the size, the skill level, the materials, some notes, the gauge, abbreviations that are used in the pattern, and a special stitch, which is your decrease, single crochet two together, and some pattern notes, and then we have the instructions. So before we start making it, we need to know what we're going to use. And we're using worsted weight 100% cotton yarn. And this was the brand that I've gotten to do this pattern. This color, if you're interested in this pretty color, it's Fleur de Lavande, something like that. Um, I found this at Walmart. And let me give you a little disclaimer on this also. I got two balls of this yarn. They are both the same dye lot number that you can see here. The first number on the top is 240573. So they're the same dye lot number, but with this pot holder, the first one I did, you can see that there's lots of pink and purple and yellow and blue. The second supposedly same dye lot has very little blue and pink, so the purple and the yellow really stand out, whereas all of the colors stand out here. So if I was using both of these balls of yarn in the same project, I would not be very happy with the yarn company for doing that. So there's the little disclaimer. The other thing I wanted to tell you about the yarn used in this project, and it doesn't have to be peaches and cream, there's a bunch of other different brands of 100% cotton yarn, this is 100% cotton, um, is that this has two ounces, which is 95 yards in this ball of yarn. So if you have a different brand and you have two ounces and around 95 yards, it may not be the exact same amount. And it is a worsted weight, which is a number four weight. You should have plenty of yarn for this pot holder. These are the amounts that I had left over from the two balls. And I would not use these together in another pot holder, but I could use these as scraps in another pot holder, which would actually be very pretty in the center part of one of these. But we've got our worsted weight cotton yarn, and we're going to use an H, number eight, five millimeter hook because we want our pot holder pieces to be fairly tight gauge, not too tight to get your hook in, but not loose, because you want those nice and firm so that your fingers are not going to get burnt when you use them. And when, you, when you're using 100% cotton yarn, then the yarn will not melt like acrylic does. Another thing I want to mention before we start crocheting is the gauge. The gauge on this pattern is 15 single crochet is four inches. So if we count the 
little lines here on our single crochets, we should have 15. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 in our 4 inches. If you have less than that, your gauge may be too loose. And if you have more than that, it might be too tight. The finished width on this pot holder is about six and a half inches wide. Now our row gauge is 18 single crochet rows is four inches. So if we put our ruler here or our tape measure, we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. And the finished height of our pot holder is around eight inches high plus our hanging loop. So let's look at our pattern and we're going to make two, like I said, for the front and back. And we're going to start row one on the right side with 12 chains. So we'll go ahead and do our 12 chains and we'll start with our slip knot. And if you don't know how to make a slip knot, I have a video for that. Put that on the hook, and then we'll go on, do our 12 chains. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. And we'll look and see what our pattern says to do next. It says two single crochet in the second chain from the hook and single crochet in the next nine chains, and two single crochet in the last chain. And the number here, 13 single crochet after the colon, means that there will be 13 single crochet at the end of that row. So we're increasing in the first stitch and the last stitch, and we're working even in the nine chains in between. So we look for our second chain from the hook, and that's not this first one, but it's the second one. So we're going to do two single crochet in there. We have one and two. That's our increase at this end. And then single crochet in each of the next nine chains across. Now I'm inserting my hook under the top loop and the back loop because that's the way I prefer to work into my chains. If you prefer only going into your top loop, then go ahead and do that all the way across. As long as you're consistent working into your chains, that's the main point in our crochet. And we're aiming for the same size stitches, of course. So we're doing one single crochet in each of the middle chains which is nine of them across. And I'm not even counting, I'm just going across here. And then when we get to the last one, we will do an increase again. Whenever we're making our piece wider, we're going to do some increases. So here we are at the last chain right here, and I'm going to do two single crochets in there. And then we'll double check and make sure that we have the 13 single crochets that the pattern calls for. So there's the two at the end, and we can count our stitches. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So we started row one correctly. So let's see what we do in row two. We chain one and turn. And then we do two single crochet in the first single crochet, single crochet in each single crochet across to the last single crochet, and two single crochet in the last single crochet. And at the end of that row, we'll have 15 single crochet because we've increased one stitch at the beginning and the end. So let's go ahead and do that row together. I'm going to chain one and turn. And we skip our chain and do two single crochet in that first single crochet. That is our increase. And one single crochet in each single crochet across. Now you always want to insert your hook under both loops of the stitches that you're working into 
unless your pattern calls for working in the front loop or the back loop. That is the default. Whenever you're following a pattern, you always insert your hook under both loops, unless the pattern says otherwise. So we're working one single crochet in each of the middle single crochets, and we're increasing in the first stitch and the last stitch on this row. We're going to be increasing in many other rows as well. But I wanted to show you how to work a row of increase. So here we are at our last single crochet, and we have to make sure that we get our hook under both loops of that stitch. There we go. So we're going to do, whoops, and we don't want to split our yarn. That happens quite easily. There's one single crochet, and now our increase of two single crochets. So let's make sure we have 15. If you're a beginner, I highly recommend it that you count your stitches at the end of each row to make sure you have the right number. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And we're ready to move on in our pattern. Now, the next three rows are repeating row 2, which is our increase row of two single crochet in the first one, two single crochet in the last one, and single crochet in each single crochet across to the last. So we'll be adding two stitches in row three, so we'll have 17. We're adding two stitches in row four, we'll have 19. And in row five, we're also adding two stitches, and we'll have 21. So I'll go ahead and work those three rows, rows three, four, and five, increasing at the beginning and the end, and if you're following along with me and working with me, go ahead and work those three rows and pause the video, and I'll meet you back when we work row six. Okay, I've finished my first five rows, and I have my 21 single crochet at the end of the fifth row. Now, I want to also mention something. You want to make sure when you're doing your two pieces, and I've already done this piece, this will be my back, that you have the same gauge on each piece. You want to make sure that they're going to line up nicely. So it's probably a good idea to crochet both pieces on the same day. So let's take a look at what we're going to do on row six. It says chain one, turn, single crochet in each single crochet across. So we're going to work even on row six. We'll have no increases and no decreases. So here's our chain one and turn, and we're going to work one single crochet in both loops of each stitch across. So let's go ahead and do that together on row six, and I'll meet you when I get to the end of row six. Okay, here I am at the end of row six, and I'm going to do my last two single crochet. Make sure on that last one you get under both loops that back loop can hide on you. Okay, so we should now have our same 21 single crochet on row 6. Let's see what row 7 calls for. Row 7 is a repeat of row 2, and we'll have 23 single crochet, because if you remember in row 2, we increased in the first and the last single crochet. So let's go ahead and do row 7, our chain 1 turn, We'll do two single crochet in the first single crochet. That's our increase at the beginning. Single crochet in each one across, and I'll meet you at the end where we're going to increase again. Okay, here I am at the end of row seven, and here's my last single crochet, and I'm going to work two single crochet into that one. Okay, so, what we need to have on row 7 is 23 single crochet, so let's make sure we've got that before we go in, because if we don't, then we're going to be messed up. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and we're good to go. 
So let's check our pattern again. And we have rows 8 through 18 is repeat row 6 11 times. That's 11 rows. 8 through 18 inclusive is 11 rows. And row 6 was chain 1 turn, single crochet in each, single crochet across. So we're going to work those 11 rows even with no increases. So I will work those 11 rows on my piece, and you can work your 11 rows and pause the video, and I'll meet you back here when we're both done with our 11 extra rows of working even. Okay, I've got my 18 rows done, and this is what it looks like right now. What this part is, is all the way up to here, and now we're going to start decreasing. Now, if you're not familiar with counting your rows, let's go ahead and count those. And I'm going to go ahead and turn my piece because it's a little easier to count when you're counting the wrong side rows. This is our first row, row one, and this is the right side of those rows. So this is the wrong side of row two. And you see that little line going across? That's easier for me to count. So I can go two, four, six, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So I know that I have my 18 rows. And you want to make sure that this part is nice and straight and you still have the correct number of single crochets in each row, which was 23. So we're ready to do row 19 and let's check our pattern and see what we're going to do. On row 19, we're going to chain one and turn and then single crochet two together in the first two single crochet. That is a decrease. So we're going to decrease at the beginning of the row. Then we'll single crochet in each single crochet across to the last two single crochet, and single crochet two together in the last two single crochet. So we will be decreasing at the end, and then we'll be down to 21 single crochet. So we'll have two single crochet less. So let's go ahead and do row 19 together. We'll put our hook, our loop back on the hook, and I always like to have my working yarn in the loop on the front of my loop when I put it on the hook. So we will do our chain one, and turn, and we're going to do our decrease. So that's worked in the first two single crochet. So we will insert our hook under both loops of the first single crochet and draw up a loop, but we do not want to finish that stitch. We're going to work in both of these stitches to do our single crochet two together. So we insert our hook in the next stitch and draw up a loop. Now we have three loops on the hook. We yarn over and pull through all three loops. And that gives us one stitch on the top where we've worked into two stitches on the bottom. So that was our decrease at the beginning of the row. We're going to single crochet in each of the next stitches across until we get to the last two stitches. And then we'll work our single crochet two together again at that end of the row. So I'll meet you at the end of this row. All right, here I am at the last two stitches on row 19, and we're going to do our single crochet two together again. So we'll insert our hook in the next stitch under both loops and draw up a loop. We have two loops on the hook. We're going to insert our hook in the next stitch, which is our last stitch, under both loops and draw up a loop. We have three loops on the hook, and we'll yarn over and pull through all three loops. So we have decreased one stitch here. So let's make sure that we have 21 single crochet. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So we can move on to the next row. Our next row, actually two rows. So we have rows 20 and 21. And that says repeat row 6 twice. And row six was our working even row. So we're going to still have 21 single crochet in these next two rows. So go ahead and do two rows even. 
I'll do that. And if you're working along with me, go ahead and do two rows even, and I will meet you at the row after that. Okay, here I am at the end of row 21. I still have my 21 single crochet, and we're ready to do the next row. So on our pattern, it says rows 22 through 24 is repeat rows 19 through 21 once, and we'll have 19 single crochet in each one of those rows. So our row 19 is our decrease with a single crochet two together at the beginning and the end, and single crochet evenly in between. And then our 20 and 21, we're working even. So let's work those three rows, and I will meet you when I get to the end of those rows. Remember this first row is decreasing at the beginning and the end. So here's our decrease at the beginning. Okay, I've got the first 24 rows done, did those last three rows, and if you were working along with me, then you did the decrease at the beginning and end of row 22, and 23 and 24 were even. So let's find out what row 25 calls for. Row 25 calls for a repeat of row 19, which was decreasing at the beginning and the end, and we'll have two less stitches. And then row 26 is repeating row 6, which was working even. So we have a decrease row and a work even row. So let's go ahead and do those two rows. I'll do these two rows, and I'll meet you at the end of these two rows. All right, I have finished those two rows. That was 25 and 26, and each of those rows should have 17 single crochet. So let's see what the next row or rows calls for in our pattern. It says rows 27 to 28 is repeat rows 25 and 26, and there should be 15 single crochet in each of those rows. So 25 was repeating row 19, which was decreasing at the beginning and end, and row 26 is repeating repeating row six, which was working even. So let's go ahead and do those two rows, and I'll meet you when I get to the end of row 28. Okay, now I've worked those last two rows, 27 and 28, with 15 single crochet in each of those. And if you're following along, you should be that far along, and we'll see what our pattern calls for next. It says rows 29 through 33, is repeat row 19 five times, and it says two less single crochet in each row. And row 33 should have five single crochet. So row 19 is our decrease row, and we'll do our decrease at the beginning and end. So row 29 would have 13 single crochet, and the next one would have 11, and then 9, and 7, and 5. So we're going to do five decrease rows, and that's at the top of our Easter egg. And I'll go ahead and do those five rows. And if you're working along with me, go ahead and do those five rows, and I'll meet you at the top on the end of that last row. Okay, I have finished all of my 33 rows. And if you're working along with me, yours should look something like this. If this is the first piece that you're doing out of the two pieces, you're going to want to finish off this piece. And you're going to want to weave in your ends. And I've already done that. This is my back piece, and I've woven in my ends on this piece at the end and the beginning. Now we can check to make sure that our pieces are the same size as well. And voila! They actually ended up being the same size because I crocheted the other one on another day, and thankfully I have the same tension today, or pretty close to it. So this is my front, and on the front piece, I want to start working on the edging. So since I have my back piece and my front piece finished, I can put these two together. And what we're going to do is we're going to look and make sure that this is the right side of the first and the last row, and it's facing us. And this one is also the right side of our first and last row, and it's facing us. So all the edges match, and we're, we're going to start working our edging. So to start our edging, 
we're going to chain one, and this is also in the instructions. And then we're going to work single crochets evenly around the edge of our project. So here's our chain one. And we've already, oh, hang on, let me go back. I'm noticing that I didn't get under a strand here of that single crochet two together on that last stitch. So let me make sure that I don't split any plies of that yarn. That looks much better. Okay, so I can chain one, get these back together, and we're going to start working our single crochets evenly around the edges. And a lot of times we'll do increases when we're working around curves, but I found that if I just do a little bit looser single crochets along here, then it works out just fine. So I'm going to start in this row, and I'm going to insert my hook right here in the first on the front piece, and in the same place on the back piece. And I'm going to work my first single crochet a little bit loosely. So you'll see that the top of the stitch is a little bit longer than the other stitches we've been working, and that helps us go around the curves. Now we're going to go in the next row, and you can put your hook way down here, or I found that if I put my hook between the two legs of my single crochet two together, it makes a little bit shorter stitch and it doesn't look so funny. So here's the other stitch in the next row on the back piece, and we're working through both thicknesses, joining them together, doing single crochet all the way around. And our next row is right here. See, this is this was our actually our wrong side row. No, I'm sorry, this was our right side row. This was, you can see these are the right side stitches, and then we're going to go in the wrong side row. So we all only want to put one stitch in the edge of each row. So we have a right side row and a wrong side row. And here's our wrong side row, and you can see with the little lines that go across the back of the stitches, that's a wrong side row. So we'll put our hook here and here, matching these up. That's another wrong side, and that's why we want to have both of those facing us, the right side of both pieces. And then we'll do the same thing on the next row. And this is what you're going to do all the way around the piece. We're not going to increase stitches, but as long as we have a little bit loose loop on, the, on our hook when we're making our single crochets, that will give us the extra that we need for going around the curves. So go ahead and work your edging the same as I'm doing here, going through both thicknesses doing one single crochet in the edge of each row, and on the bottom, well, let me meet you at the end of this edge, and we'll do the bottom together. Okay, I've got my edging on this first side edge, and I've worked in that last single crochet row, which was row one. And now we have just our uh, free loops of our foundation chain left. And what I should have done before I started this was weave in this beginning end. So let me go back one stitch and I'll show you how to weave in the tail because I would like to weave it in on the wrong side of row one. So let me grab my tapestry needle and we'll get that yarn in the eye of the needle. And let me demonstrate how to weave in the end, if you don't already know how to do so. So here's my stitches on row one. This is the wrong side of the row, and that's the inside of my pot holder. I don't want to weave them in on the front of here, because then it'll show on the front of my pot holder. So here's the legs of my stitches. And I'm going to go under those legs 
of the single crochet on row one on the wrong side and get that end woven in. And I can go in several stitches at a time and get that nice and even. And since my tail is nice and long, I can go all the way across the row. If yours is a little bit shorter, you won't be able to go across your row as far as I can. And I'll do the last few. See, these are the legs of the single crochet. Those are the legs that come down on the back. And there's the end of my row. So that end is woven in. It's not too tight or too loose. And I can grab my scissors and cut the rest of that off. Okay, so if your beginning tail was not woven in on your front piece, go ahead and weave that in before you do your edging or before you do your bottom of the edging. Okay, so I took this stitch out. I'm going to need to put that stitch back in. That's the edge of row one. And now we can work in the free loops of our chains. You see those free loops? That's where we're going to work at the bottom of our pot holder. So we want to make sure our stitch is nice and tall there, nice and wide, that our loop isn't too tight when we're going around this corner, the bottom corner. We can have our loops a little bit tighter across the bottom because we don't have a curve, we have a nice straight line. So we're going to line up each one of those stitches and make sure we're working in the front and the back layers of our pot holder. And do one single crochet in each set of free loops across. And that's on our foundation chain at the bottom. So we'll get to the end of this, and then we'll be able to go all the way up here, and I'll go ahead and finish all this, and you can do that with me, and I'll meet you when we get to this top edge and show you what to do for the hanging loop. Okay, now I've gotten around to the top edge, and these two layers are almost joined together, and we have five single crochets in our last row, what we're going to do is single crochet one into each of the first three single crochets, still going through both layers. Okay, if our stitch is a little tall, we want to shorten it. Okay, here's the third one. Now we want to do our hanging loop because this is the middle. So I like to do eight chains for my hanging loop. Five, six, seven, eight, and I sing, I slip stitch into the top of this last single crochet. This was the last single crochet work before the eight chains. So I insert my hook from the top to the bottom under the front loop and the left leg. And this is something I learned uh, while doing doilies and making picots. So I slip stitch right in there, and that forms our hanging loop. And we have two more single crochet left in this row, so we're going to do our single crochet into each one of those, joining those two layers, and then we'll be able to finish off our pot holder. And I see a little strand right here that got left behind when I did my slip stitch. So let me get that back on there and do those last two single crochets. And sometimes you have to look around a little bit for that last stitch and get your hook right in there. Okay, now there's two different ways we could finish this off. One is by doing a slip stitch into that first single crochet but that leaves a little bit of a bump. So I like to do an invisible join. So I'll take my strand of yarn and give myself a nice length because I'm going to be weaving in this in. 
and I go ahead and pull that strand out of that last single crochet that I worked and I'm going to use my tapestry needle to create this invisible join and this will make it so that you can't even tell where you began and ended. So I'll take my needle and insert it from the back to the front under both loops of that first single crochet. This was my chain one, so I'm not going in there. Okay, and then we'll take it and insert it into the top of our last single crochet and under that left leg. And we'll put that to the back. And there is our invisible join and it looks like any other stitch so you don't see that uh, slip stitch at the end. There's no knot or anything like that. And we can go ahead and weave our tail in on the back of our piece. And we can go under the legs on the back of our single crochet on our edging. And we don't want to just go that far because that's not going to make it very secure. So let's go under a few more legs and we'll go ahead and go down to another row. We can go into the row below that or the row after that. And I'm just going to go down here to this row. It doesn't matter if we skip one row, but we want to go under some more strands of our single crochets on previous rows. And it helps to actually weave your tail in one direction and then back another direction. And this is on the back of our pot holder, so it's not going to be visible. And that should be nice and tight. And we can go ahead and cut that off. So here's our finished pot holder. We have our hanging loop at the top. And we've got our two layers, nice and thick. And that's going to protect your hands really well when you take something out of the oven. And with it being 100% cotton, it's not going to melt like acrylic would. Now, if you'd like to do the other pot holder, what I did on this one was I did my first eight rows with my lavender. And then I did the next, let's see how many rows, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 with my white. And I did the last, I think it was 11 rows with the lavender. So I change colors just the same way that you do in single crochet. The last stitch of the row, this was a wrong side row. I did my last yarn over of that last single crochet with the white and then I started with the white and I did that same kind of color change at the end of this white row into the lavender. And then these stitches for the flowers are lazy daisies and this is embroidery and if you've never done embroidery you can watch somebody else's embroidery video on YouTube or get a book and learn that. Um, this is a French knot in the middle of each of these flowers and just all around too. I did a little lazy daisies for some leaves too and I just kind of free formed it what looked pleasing to me. So if you have other embroidery stitches that you think would look good on one of these pot holders, leave a comment down below in this video. I hope you followed along all the way to the end and have finished your pot holder successfully. If you'd like a copy of this pattern, it's available for purchase on my website. The link is available in the video description below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching and happy crocheting to all of you. Quick thank you to those of you who have purchased a pattern from my website. Your patronage is very well, that is what, that, I don't know. <laughs> my words very are gone. Very much appreciated. Very much appreciated. There we go. <laughs> Do you enjoy decorating your, hol your holidays? <laughs> my lips very slowly. <laughs>